Hi friends, welcome to Biology Exams for A.com. Today we are going to discuss some ecology questions of CSAR UGC Net Life Sciences with detailed explanation of answers. Hope this will help you. Wishing you the very best for the exam. Undoubtedly, ecology is one of the most important topic that you need to study, that you should study at least 8 to 10 questions you can expect from ecology. Moving into the questions, first one, which of the following is incorrect about keystone species? The options are, first one, species other than consumers can be a keystone species. Second one, keystone species has influence on a community proportionate to its abundance. Third option is, removing a keystone species can reduce species richness of a community. And the fourth option is, Removing a keystone species can affect successive trophic levels, causing a trophic cascade. Here the question is, pick out the incorrect statement. So this is very important, pick out the incorrect statement. So here keystone species by, if you know something about keystone species, you can be sure that this is a correct statement. Removing a keystone species can reduce species richness. Removing a keystone species has huge impact on trophic levels causing a trophic cascade then these two may be a little confusing here species other than consumers can be a keystone species it's a possibility in a rainforest for example ficus or fig tree is a keystone species it is a producer so the option right option is Keystone species has influence on a community proportionate to its abundance. I'll be giving you a brief explanation about keystone species. So let's take an example. Tiger is a keystone species in forest. So you can see this is a producer grasses. Then this is grazed by primary consumers like deer. Then that is spread upon by top predators like tiger. So tiger is a keystone species. So what happens if there is a reduction in tiger population? Let's see. So the number of tiger is reduced. So normally when the predator is, the number of predator has reduced, that will definitely impact the population of the prey or the primary consumers. The number of deer population increases as a result, it will overgraze the ecosystem so that, so that the primary productivity is very much disturbed, ultimately causing a trophic cascade, a catastrophe, a complete disaster of the ecosystem. So this is just for the sake of an understanding. Now what are keystone species? Keystone species is often any organism whose removal severely affects the overall diversity, stability and structure of an ecosystem. Often keystone species are predators like tiger, starfish, shark, wolf, prairie dogs, grizzly bears, etc. But there are some keystone species like ecosystem engineers like beaver, African elephants in African savanna, African elephants they are effective grazers that will keep the ecosystem as grassland forever without allowing the trees to come up so that it will remain as grassland. Then hummingbirds and bees that are effective pollinators, they are also keystone species pollinating numerous plant species and maintaining the population of plant species and also all the other species that is depending on that plants. Then there is food and nesting source. Producers can also be keystone species like cactus in deserts that is a nesting place for birds and also food source, nectar source for many birds, insects, etc. Then fig in rainforest, it is a ficus. It is providing food all throughout the year in all seasons, actually providing food for all animals throughout the year thus serving as a keystone species. Now I would like to add some more terms in ecology that you can expect as questions. One is flagship species. A flagship species is a species selected to act as an ambassador icon or symbol 
for a defined habitat often as a campaign or environmental cause often meant for conservation or protection of wildlife you know that panda is the symbol giant panda is a symbol of wwf then bengal tiger there's a project save tiger project uh, we are very familiar with we are very familiar with that with dhoni amida bachchan coming out and asking us the importance of tiger then there is african elephant asian elephant and golden lion tamer and this is a flagship species that is present in brazil then the second term is umbrella species this species often have a large habitat often the conservation of that species result in the conservation of many other species take the case of tiger tiger is an umbrella species so there are many efforts going on in the country to protect tiger so once the tiger is protected the entire ecosystem is protected thereby providing protection to other animals like leopards monkeys hares etc so umbrella species is actually species that the protection of that particular species will provide protection of many other species then the third one is endemic species you might be knowing this endemic species are plants or animals that exist only in one geographical region or limited distribution which is seen only in one place classical example is kangaroos are seen only in australia then asiatic lion the nilgiri tar it is only in western ghats then tortoises of galapagos island uh, plants examples include strobilanthus kuntiana uh, that is endemic to southern western ghats so you can expect terms like this in the coming exams so get familiarized with maximum number of terms hopefully i'll be making one more video on these including maximum number of terms second question a species whose life history strategies allow for high intrinsic rate rates of increase our strategist will also exhibit the following except the options are high tolerance for both environmental instability and low quality resources short period of exponential population growth reproductive strategy that involves random mating semal parity and little or no parental investment and the fourth one survivorship curve that show density dependent mortality typically exhibiting type 1 or 2 survivorship curves so this is a question about are selected species and case selected species so the question is all the following statements are correct regarding the are selected species except and the answer is survivorship that show density dependent mortality typically exhibiting type 1 or 2 survivorship curves let us see what is actually are selected and case selected species so are selected means rapid selection take the case of fish and insects case selected means humans mammals etc so are selected species are uh, can tolerate un unstable environment they are often small sized organisms they make numerous offspring very few reaches maturity therefore short life expectancy often individuals reproduce only once and is density independent and follows type 3 survivorship curve and we'll be discussing that then case selected just opposite often lives in a stable environment they are large size organisms with less number of offsprings that is having long life expectancy often individuals reproduce more than once it is density dependent and following follows type 1 or type 2 survivorship curve so this take this example think of insects and think of humans then reproduction rate then expect life expectancy you can easily recollect the features of r selected and k selected species r means rapid rapid reproduction k means carrying capacity now survivorship curve this is a survivorship curve as you can see this is a number of survivors and this is age in the case of k selected species this is a type 1 curve where majority of the individuals will reach the old age or 
the life expectancy is very high. Whereas in the case of our selected species, the number of offsprings will be very high, but the number of individuals reaching the old age or maturity is very low. Therefore, the type 3 curve is for our selected species, whereas type 1 curve is for K-selected species. Type 2 is also for K-selected species, the in-between one. Now moving to the next question. In the context of diversity patterns of species, which one of the following statements is incorrect? Alpha diversity is diversity within a single community. Second option is beta diversity is a measure of the change in species composition from one community or habitat to another. Third option is alpha diversity is a regional diversity found among range of communities in a geographical region. And the fourth option is gamma diversity is the regional diversity found among range of communities or habitats in a geographical region. Here also the question is you have to pick the incorrect statement. Here in the options alpha diversity is mentioned twice. Therefore the chance of becoming the right answer is very much for alpha diversity. Alpha diversity is a diversity within a single community. If you know this, then this is the wrong statement. Alpha diversity is a regional diversity found among range of communities in a geographical region. So you can pick options like this. If you know a little bit of the topic, you, you have to read, you have to reread and you have to read between the lines to get this. Now let us see what is alpha, beta and gamma diversity. This is as per the Whittaker recognized three types of diversity. Alpha diversity is the diversity of species within a community, within a habitat, within an ecosystem. Whereas beta diversity is the diversity within a range of several community or between ecosystems. It is between ecosystems whereas gamma diversity is a diversity in a range of all communities that is within a region, geographical region. Let's take an example. In a grassland, alpha diversity, the diversity of species in a pond which is in a grassland can be called as alpha diversity. Then near the pond there is a marshy area. Then comparing the pond diversity and marshy area diversity, it can be called as beta diversity. Come, there are many such small microhabitats or communities or ecosystems in a large or a large region. The diversity of an entire region or grassland can be called as gamma diversity. Hope you got the point. This is one community. This is between communities. This is among various communities in a geographical region. Moving into the next question. Given below is an ecological pyramid. The above pyramid represents. So you have to learn ecological pyramid. It's very easy. And I will be leaving a link in the description so that you can refer more. So these are the options. Pyramid of number of a parasitic food chain and the pyramid of biomass of a pond ecosystem. Pyramid, second one is pyramid of number of a pond ecosystem and pyramid of biomass of a forest ecosystem and third option is pyramid of energy of a grassland and pyramid of biomass of an open ocean ecosystem and the fourth option is pyramid of biomass of a grassland and pyramid of number of a tropical forest ecosystem. In the case of ecological pyramids, majority of the pyramids are erect and upright. So they, these are some exceptions. So in whatever case you should be aware of the exceptions that are often the questions. Here the pyramid of number, this is the first option is the answer. I'll be showing the image. So this is the biomass, pyramid of biomass of a pond ecosystem. As you can see, the producers are phytoplanktons that is eaten up by zooplanktons which are very small in size that is eaten up by small fishes that is eaten up by large fishes. So as we move up the pyramid the biomass increases giving an inverted pyramid. So this is also happening in the case of parasitic food chain. 
This is a producer plant tree. On tree there are many fruit eating birds. The number is increasing. On fruit eating birds there are lice and bugs. On that there are numerous thousands of bacteria, fungi and actinomycetes. As we move up the number increases. So these are examples of inverted pyramids, biomass of pond ecosystem and pyramid of numbers in parasitic food chain. I'll be leaving a link in the description for more. Next question. Three species M, N and O when grown independently in a laboratory showed typical logistic growth curves. However, when grown in pairs, the following growth curves were observed. What interpretation regarding the interspecific relationship between M, N and O can be deduced from the above observations? So whenever you get a question like this, don't skip this question. You just observe it carefully. Observe it carefully once, twice or thrice. Then you will be getting some clue. So in this graph, this is number and this is time. This that species M has nothing to do with the species N. At, at some point of time, the increase in M causes reduction in N. And these are the options. N predates over O and therefore can also predate on M. N is competed out by M and O. N and O possibly have a prey predator relationship. M and O exhibit prey predator relationship. Let us check it out using this graph. Here M and N. In options there is nothing like M and N. So just leave it. Then the second one M and O. M and O. There is no observable relation. M and grow. M and O grows somewhat independently. The number increases without any effect. And the third one, N and O. Once the N is increasing, then there is an increase in O. Once the N is declining, there is an increase in O. So this is a typical graph of prey-predator relationship. So the answer is N and O possibly have a prey-predator relationship. As you can see, the number of prey increases, the number of predator also increases. Then the number of predator increases, there will be reduction in number of prey like that. So this is an example, rabbit and wolves. You can see this is overlapping and one increases, other down decreases. Rabbits increases, then there will be more wolves. Wolves also increases. Then rabbits comes down then wolves increases like that so this is a typical graph of prey predator interaction model so for ecology please go through different types of graphs you can expect many questions as graphs often it is very simple don't skip it all on a sudden that's my humble advice moving into the next question Given below are the population pyramids of three different populations A, B and C depicting the relationship between birth and death rates in each. Based on the population pyramids given above, which one of the following is incorrect? Here also the question is pick out the incorrect statement. So all three will three of the statements will be correct and one will be incorrect. For, for option one, population B has slower growth rate than population A. Population C has birth rate higher than its death rate. Population A represents a rapidly growing population. Population B has the highest death rate among the three populations. Here population B, ha this, is, this is the population graph or population pyramids as you can see. Uh, this represents the birth rate and this is the middle age and this is the death rate as you can see this graph is a parabolic graph uh, that is represents a rapidly growing population and this graph towards the end the population is declining so so old age there is little dip in number in old age here you can see the birth rate is comparatively low compared to the death rate so here the option here the answer is population c has birth rate higher than the death rate so this is the incorrect statement here this, here birth rate is low whereas death rate is high so I'll, I'll be giving a brief explanation about population pyramids so this is a population pyramid so as you can see uh, this is the age category 
and uh, this is male and female population uh, this basal region that represents the younger ones if this region is having large numbers that indicates that higher birth rate then this middle region that bulges out indicates a growing population with higher fertility rate then towards this region that is from 65 to 100 this is uh, the old age population or elderly population is at the top so large number of large number here represents high life expectancy whereas small number represents higher death rate or low small number represents low life expectancy so i'll be giving the link in the description so that you can learn more about these population pyramids it's very simple now moving to the next question given below are the names of some of the national parks of india and their key protected animals based on the table given above which of the following options represents the correct match so these are the options dipru seikova national park assam indian rhinoceros Jaldapara national park then hankul mukurti national park feral horse Tachikam National Park, Asiatic Lion, Kir Forest, Nilgiri Tar. So, while looking into these questions, I know this much. Kir Forest National Park, that is Asiatic Lion, I know that. Then the second one I know is Mukurti National Park, this is Nilgiri Tar. Nilgiri Tar is endemic to Western Ghats, that is what I know. Rest, I am not sure about it. Once I saw this Assam, I thought of Indian rhinoceros. Then I know that it is not this national park, it is Kasiranga National Park. So, oh, and the chance of this coming together is very rare. Now let us pick out. So first, looking into the options that I know. This uh, E is E, fourth one, E4 then c5 e4 and c5 it occurs twice e4 and c5 then there is a little chance of becoming this together a1 therefore a3 then most probably this is the option and the answer is fourth one so these questions are often we may not be knowing the entire options or entire match we may not be getting the entire match exact matches but we can actually guesswork it based on the options if you know one or two or two or three definitely you will be getting the right answer there is no chance of a mistake if we know one or two so don't leave these questions as such just take some time often you can come out with the right option next question Given below are two patterns of ecological succession. Four species are represented by A, B, C and D. An arrow indicates is replaced by. In the context of ecological succession, which of the following statements is incorrect with respect to the figures given above? Options are Model X represents facilitation model and Model Y represents tolerance model. Model X represents tolerance model and Model Y represents inhibition model. As per model Y, C can outcompete B but can also invade a habitat in their absence. As per the model X, A makes the environment more suitable for B to invade. There are three types of models regarding ecological succession and the option is the incorrect statement among these is model X represents tolerance model and model Y represents inhibition model. This is actually model y, model X is a facilitation model. The species A will make conditions suitable for the growth of species B like that, facilitating the next species. And this Y model is the tolerance model. All organisms are having equal chance and the one which tolerate the environment best will be selected to survive. So these are the models. First one is facilitation model. Uh, environment is less suitable for early species and more suitable for late successional species and the first species are often replaced by the next species first species facilitates 
or provides conducive environment for the growth of the next species. Inhibition modern model, the environment is less suitable for establishment of all species, all have to struggle for existence. Tolerance model is environment less suitable for early species, but neither less nor more favorable for later successional species. So it's all dependent on the fitness and the adaptability of the species. So this model is a tolerance model. Given below are the species accumulation curves and rarefaction curves measured in an ecological community. Which one of the following statements is incorrect about the two curves? So this is the curve and this is the accumulation curve and this one is the rarefaction curve and the options are here also we need to pick out the incorrect statement species accumulation curves moves from left to right and rarefaction curves moves from right to left second option species accumulation curve represents the total species richness of the assemblage third option rarefaction curves represents the mean of repeated resampling of all pooled samples and the fourth one rarefaction curve is the realized accumulation value of the total species in a community and this is the incorrect option it is not the realized accumulation value it is the expected value of the total species in a community and i will be giving a brief description about this a species accumulation curve it is also called as collector's curve it records the total number of species revealed revealed during the process of data collection it is the actual record of number of species that is occurring during a data collection whereas a rare faction curve is prepared by repeatedly resampling that region each time that particular team will be witnessing different number of species therefore making plotting the average number of species of different samples Accumulation curves are built from left to right, whereas rarefaction curves are built from right to left. A rarefaction curve is often, it is not the realized value, it is the statistical expectation of the corresponding accumulation curve. Wishing you the very best for exams, continue working out maximum number of questions. Each question will give you confidence, take time to work out as many questions as possible often a question may take 30 minutes maybe an hour but still once you have once you have challenged that question once you are you are familiar with that questions that adds to your confidence whatever you learn learn in depth it is the key to qualify this exam what it is not about completing the entire syllabus it is all about learning in depth whatever you know Thank you so much for your support. Send your suggestions. This is Jasarhan if you are with biologyexamsforyou.com.